Hey there, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, the death of the humble switch on button is upon us. If you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so because I make YouTube videos, I get lots of emails and pitches about new products and new reports and new things that people want to uh, kind of, you know, uh, publicize. And they're always asking me, am I interested? And most of the time it's like, no, 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 boring, boring, boring. But occasionally I get an email and I go, oh, that sounds interesting. And I got an email from a company called UltraSense who have found a way to replace mechanical switches and buttons with a very small and cheap ultrasound sensor. And this will have lots of applications on smartphones and also on home appliances and also in cars and so on. And that's what I wanna talk about today. So I'm assuming you know what a switch or a button does on your mobile phone, you might have two buttons, a button rocker for volume up, volume down. When the phone detects that the contact has been made, then of course the volume will go up uh, and so on. Now the problem is today, a lot of phones uh, come with kind of waterproofing or dust proofing. And every time you build the chassis of the phone, you have to punch holes in it for those buttons to go through. And then you fit the this kind of the top to the, the button and then there's a mechanical switch underneath it. And then there's the, the wires and the circuitry and, and so on. And of course, that is a place that moisture can get into, dirt can get into. When you're trying to get IP68 rating or whatever is the IP rating, then of course that becomes a weak point. So then it has to have a gasket on it, it has to have some rubber around it, and it gets quite complicated. In fact, it could, having that kind of button can cost maybe $2 upwards, just in terms of the, the milling and the manufacturing and the extra gaskets and so on that you need to put on a phone. So it would be really useful if you could find a way of having a button that you tap but there's no actual physical moving part. And then of course, if you think about other areas where we use buttons and switches, being able to just do it by tapping your finger rather than actually having to you know, pass a mechanical thing would actually be very useful in lots of use cases. And that's what UltraSense have invented. A very, very tiny, tiny little sensor, the same size as the end of a ballpoint pen, that when you put it into smartphones or into home appliances or into a car, it allows you to switch things on and off just by tapping your finger. And it's more than just a tap. I've said tap up until now and kind of like the idea of how you switch things on and off, turn the volume up or down. This thing can actually also measure force. So you can press it, you can hard press it, and it can detect how much pressure you're putting on again through the use of ultrasound. And not only that, it actually works through just about any material and doesn't matter whether your hands are wet, whether the phone's getting wet, whether there's dust, whether there's dirt, whatever, it works through wood, it works through metal, it works through different thicknesses, it works through basically everything. So this also brings the opportunity, because it's so small, just the end of a uh, ballpoint pen, that's ignoring the extra cables that you need, wires for getting the messages to it. But of course you can sew this into clothing, you can put it into all kinds of things. We'll look at some of the use cases in a minute. But using ultrasound, they're able to detect whether you have pressed or not pressed the button. So let's just go through some of the slides that they showed me. Here you can see that the, this uh, ultrasound device works through any material with any thickness. They don't need any cutouts, any holes for it to go through. And of course, when you put several of them together, you can actually have different gestures as your it detects your finger going from one to the other. Maybe three or let's say four of these little sensors in a row can detect swipes and so on. And one of the things they're saying would be interesting is now that we've kind of got underscreen fingerprint readers, people are using face unlock and so on, actually having them on the back of our phones could be quite interesting, different arrangements here, sliders, touchpads, uh, so that you can actually do things on the back of your phone without increasing the cost too much, very, very small amount of space in the, on the back of the case there, so that you can have single tap, double tap, tap and hold, multiple tap, slides, trackpad, all these different gestures on the back part of your phone. And one of the areas where that could be very useful, of course, is taking selfies, being able to have to hold it at the phone, and then just tap with your finger at the back to allow you to actually uh, take the photograph. And of course, on gaming phones, having these different gaming triggers built onto the top of the phone, even in several places around the phone, would be quite uh, interesting. 
And I'm actually thinking further ahead, I'm thinking like, well, actually if you had multiple of these sensors all in different places around your phone, you could actually turn the volume up and down by just sliding your finger up and down. You can have a tap to turn on a camera that maybe that comes out through the top. You can do all kinds of things now with only adding a few dollars cost to the build materials that allow your phone to really have a whole bunch of different sensors on it for taps and drags and clicks and all, and all kinds of things, double tapping. Like really, you know, UI designers need to get their hands on this and really see what they can do in terms of the human uh, gadget interaction, human computer interaction. And it also turns out that uh, this is quite useful when it comes to 5G, because 5G requires multiple antennas uh, across your phone and every time you put a button in that's taking up valuable space that actually needs to be exposed to the edge of the phone where the antenna should go and so a lot of the uh, smartphone makers are finding that antennas go very well when you have this kind of waterfall glass kind of the edge type of glass because that glass is a good medium for which the antenna can transmit and receive and if that gets blocked by a button you have a problem but if you now be able to put in an ultrasound sensor then that means that the uh, buttons uh, have don't need the space for the buttons in that kind of waterfall glass design. And then going further, of course, it could be added to watches, to uh, headphones, earbuds, uh, VR units, where you don't actually, again, have to drill the holes and have the mechanical button. You just put these little sensors on and then you're able to add in all this functionality to devices not taking up very much space, doesn't get in the way of other things, and you can actually add uh, all this great UI stuff to your uh, uh, devices. And the same when you come to home appliances, you're being able to, you know, your fridge, your washing machine, even smart speakers, uh, you know, TVs and so on, being able to just touch, tap, slide, tap and hold, double tap, all this stuff on a device is, you know, just again, as I said, the UI designers really need to get hold of this and see what they can do for us uh, in the future. And again, as I've mentioned earlier, it can be go inside of cars, lots and lots of different use places on the dashboard, steering wheel, home entertainment systems, or the car entertainment systems rather, everything that we can use there can actually be done with these little sensors. Now, of course, when you think about a switch, compared to all the other technology that you have in a smartphone, it is a pretty simple thing. You've got processors and screens and cameras and antennas and modems and all that stuff. Now a switch is kind of at the bottom of the food chain to what is technology. So of course the inventors of the UltraSense uh, switches need to actually make it as simple as possible, but yet for it to offer lots of features and functionality. And to that end, they've combined the whole thing in this tiny little sensor, as I said, the size of a uh, ballpoint pen tip. It's got a couple of wires that come off it for communication, which would be done through I squared C or SPI. You'd probably mount them on a motherboard that would go on the edge of the phone or at the back of whatever surface is that you're using. And built into each sensor, into each sensor, it's completely self-contained. So you've already got built into that the memory that you need. It's got built into the microcontroller. It's got built in all the stuff of the communications. It's all there in a self-contained. So you don't need this thing and then additional equipment, additional circuitry to make it work. You've got it all there inside each individual sensor. And I find it really fascinating they managed to get a microcontroller and some memory and everything inside of that sensor all in one go. I think that's a really neat design that they've come up with there. Oh, really neat. <laughs> Now, during my discussion with them, I said, well, okay, you've got a microcontroller, you've got memory, you've got algorithms running for detecting these ultrasound things. Surely that's gonna make it very expensive. And their uh, economic argument is this, by the time you think about a switch in terms of milling out the holes or making the frame with a hole in it, and then you've got the physical switch itself, and then you've maybe got rubber gaskets, and then you've maybe got other things for protecting it, and you've got you know the springs and whatever else you need to make that, that little switch kind of uh, feel tactile and, and work well. They say that's around about the $2 mark in terms of total cost to actually put that into a, a device. Not the, obviously the little rocker, the little switch, not gonna be $2, but the whole total cost. So they're aiming to be able to sell this, uh, each sensor to cost that same thing, just, just around $2. This recalls very ballpark figures and depend on a whole bunch of other factors, like you know if you buy a million of them or something like that. But the point is, is that this isn't like, oh, that's a luxury thing you've got to put into something. It's gonna add more and more to the cost this could actually be something that cost-wise is kind of neutral 
but yet offers so much more functionality. So I'm really, my brain has really been whirling, thinking about all the places that I use switches and things on cameras, on TVs, on phones, on headsets, on earbuds, on in the car, home appliances, everywhere I go, oh, there's a switch there. And I've been thinking, oh, there's a switch there. I've been clicking a switch here. I'm thinking, wow, couldn't these be revolutionized just by something you can tap or touch or swipe or whatever. And that would bring up a whole new love level of kind of UI functionality. So as I said, I, don't, I get these pitches and emails and I don't really respond. This one I thought was worth mentioning. So apparently we're gonna see phones next year, 2020, that have got some of these things built into them. So I really look forward to seeing those in action. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget I'm launching a newsletter. So do go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address there. Please do subscribe to the channel. You means you can stick around and see what other videos I make. And uh, I suppose that's it. I'll see you in the next one.